Hmm. Okay. Slightly lower frame rate than I thought, but it should be fine. Welcome, guys. I'm going to do a quick tour of the world that I previously showed you before. Um, doing quite a few changes, quite a lot of changes. Um, not just to the main base, but uh, to various outlying structures. And I figured now would be a perfect time to just to let you see everything that we've been doing so far. Um, we've got a big, massive storage and construction area in here, workbenches. We now have a anvil, a anvil, an anvil, um, ender chest, tons of furnaces. Main core building really is pretty much unchanged, though, from last time, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. One thing that you may notice now is that I'm running around quite quickly. Um, we now have beacons set up around well, at the perimeters and one there, giving us all various bonuses. So we have speed, haste, strength, jump boost, regeneration, resistance. Jump boost will allow you to jump over fences. Normally these you can't jump over. With jump boost, right over and breaking your ankle. One big major change is the dock. Uh, given the huge amount of water around, we decided, well, John decided. A lot of the stuff was built by John, so if I, uh, I hope I don't take any unnecessary credit. Given the huge amount of water around, it seems John decided that a way of getting boats in and out of the place, not just quickly, but in a fun manner, yeah, was needed. And so, he created this rather lavish construction. And yeah, the switch gear for the doors is broken. They're jammed open now until you step on the switch. Usual maintenance access. John and his redstone. By the way, uh, if anyone's noticed, I am using a different texture pack now. I am using Mises texture pack. Um, I honestly can't remember quite how this works. One of these, something... Right, this spits out a boat. You get in the boat, hit the button, yes. And there's a countdown, and out you go, into the water, and you're free. Which is kind of cool. That's Dave's tower there, as you can tell from all the lava pissing out the sides of it. He's gone down quite far, I think to bedrock level, to build his Dave cave. And there's something over there. Oh yes, that contains the one remaining villager from when we took this place over. So now to get back into here, I think we go through here. And... I'm not entirely sure if that was right. I don't think that worked quite the way we wanted it to. Okay, that's the dock. The farm has been changed a little bit from its original design. Initially, all the animals were just kept separate to one floor. Then they were separated out by type. So blue sheep, red sheep, etc. were all separated out. Someone's come along and vandalised that layout and well, I'll show you shortly, but as you can see, breed before killing, shut the gates behind you. These animals like to get out, and we like to keep the stocks alive. And we now have here a new hopper system. You can put items that you want. It'll pick up items dropped around it, and you can put items into it to go into the chests that are down there. So it's where we collect all the eggs from the chickens, because they drop straight down the middle. We have a whole load of cows, and all the sheep are... There's a lot of sheep. We never kill the sheep, because there's no point in killing the sheep. The only thing they drop is wool, and you can shear that off. All the other animals we kill for resources, obviously. Uh, there's some more sheep up here, of a different colour. And here's the chicken farm. Which is... There's chickens everywhere. And the chicken farm itself is relatively inaccessible. It seems they're all in there. 
I hope I don't pick up any eggs because I really can't be bothered carrying around a whole lot of junk. So going back down and down and out and down and down and down and down and down and yes I picked up an egg. So I'll just put it in the hopper and it'll filter it out into a chest. Very basic farm. Quite handy for when you need more food. Now the railway hasn't really been changed much since the last time I showed you anything. The mob spawner is going to be changed because it's currently apparently a little inefficient. Right now John is in the process of lighting up a huge was it 500 by 500 area both above and below ground which is madness. Then we're going to tear this down and rebuild. Uh, you may also notice the new wall around the around the place. Um, no real reason for it other than why not but it has given us a completely new structure in the middle as well as the nether you can quickly you can now go quickly between places over ground without risk of anything spawning thanks to what we're calling Skynet which is literally just a whole load of glass bridges that go to various places now my one fear is running around here with all these um, power-ups from the beacons I've fallen off Skynet once I landed in water so it wasn't so bad basically this way leads to Dave's tower this way leads over to the village that we found ages ago which I'm sure you've all seen and this is a new path where's my stake? this is a new path which follows along, you can see the railway there, it's a half completed railway as well um, it's not powered yet um, it's just normal rail so it's really useless um, but you run along here, there's a PVP tower as well which is really big, there's the top of it basically it's, yeah, it's king of the ladder climb up, knock everyone else off stay up there as long as you can and now we'll just run along and I'll show you my little summer home area I got the idea for this off imager.com actually someone had built something kinda similar in the middle of a jungle just this big glass and wood house and I thought it looked stunning it was the sort of place I wanted to build so I built one kind of in a jungly desert area but right on the waterfront you can see the chunks slowly loading in here. We're really high up at this point. We're at Y139. So, okay, got to be careful here because this, this is Dave's doing Skynet, basically, and it's incomplete. So it's very, very easy to fall off and die. So you just got to be very, very careful. So the, this is basically the area that I created. Um, it's lit up a bit, not terribly well. Every now and again, there's a little, sp there's a spider will spawn on top. Balcony. And what I've got here, a little diving platform, into the water. Close the gate behind me. This is the master bedroom. Obviously, it's mine. Uh, guest bedrooms, John and Dave claimed these, John took this one and Dave took this with his usual eloquence. In case you didn't see it, that sign just said, mine, 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 mine. Uh, and this is the ground floor. I mean, there's hardly anything here but some bits to do some construction, an ender chest. I don't really have any big plans for this place. It's, it's more like a safe house while I work on some bits. I was going to put a nether portal down here f to connect it to all the other places but I really couldn't be bothered with coming in and hearing that sound all the time so well, what I'll do actually is I will go sleep because it's night time and I don't really want to be traversing out there in the night 
to show you the next big build. There's a lot of dark. Yeah, so I'm now using Mises Texture Pack, and as you can see, I'm using Optifine as well. So I get slightly better performance and a slightly nicer looking Minecraft as well. I've not really contributed to many huge builds so far in Minecraft. Not on this server anyway. Um, so I decided it was about time that I really I got something to really put my name on. And this is it. As you can tell, it's stadium-like. In the past year or so, I've gotten into baseball in a big way. Ooh, there's a spider. You can... You could piss off and all. And <clears throat> so I wanted to recreate a major league stadium in Minecraft. The hardest, well, I say the hardest part, but the first big trouble we had was I decided I wanted to make it as close to 1 1 scale as I could. So the actual field area is a 100 by 100 meter square so that's 100 blocks and that's big this was not a flat area to begin with this was hilly and full of holes it took a lot of work to smooth this all out and there's big areas underneath where stuff can actually spawn depending on how well lit up it is if anyone's a baseball fan they'll probably recognize that scoreboard um, the stadium I'm recreating is Coors Field home of the Colorado Rockies this building will be gone once construction is complete. It's just a sort of temporary construction hut. I did have a little one floor glass and wood building sitting behind home plate. Then I needed to move it to build the stands. Dave helped with that and decided that I needed a three story mud hut. So far, there's not a huge amount in the stadiums or in the stands. Uh, there's nothing behind them except a sheer drop. It's, you know, it's it's definitely nowhere near finished. I have these stands up, and they are bloody big. Yeah, you know, they took a long time and a lot of stone to make. There are VIP boxes and press boxes. And if we go along here again, this dirt will come down at the end. It's all scaffolding, and if you look over there. That's the bullpen in there for the pitchers to warm up. Obviously there's no way of actually playing baseball in Minecraft, but you know, it's a little project. It's a big project. Uh, the only place that you can legitimately get to from outside the stands without hacking through anything right now is the press boxes. Let's give you a nice little view of the field. Ow. Right. And now I shall venture back over and go to Dave's Tower. I won't show the entire trip back because that's just going to be boring for you guys. So I will catch you uh, when I'm there. <laughs>